नमस्कार वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल आर व्यूवर्स एंड लर्नर्स इन दिस लाइव फोन इन सेशन ऑफ सी आई टी एंड सी आर टी आई एम रेणु भट्ट विद यू ऑल एंड यू आर वॉचिंग अस लाइव ऑन ई विद्या चैनल चैनल नंबर सेवन एंड ऑन आर एन सी आर टी ऑफिशियल यूट्यूब चैनल एज वेल डियर लर्नर दिस इज आर सेशन फॉर इंग्लिश स्टूडेंट सेवन स्टैंडर्ड इंग्लिश स्टूडेंट एंड द टॉपिक दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टूडे इन दिस सेशन इज अ ब्यूटिफुल पॉम दैट इज मेडो सरप्राइजेस डू यू लाइक सरप्राइजेस ऑफकोर्स वी डू तो वट आर दो सरप्राइजेस वी विल लेट एस नो बाय आर एक्सपर्ट लेट्स मीट हर यू आर प्रोफेसर कीर्ति कपूर यू आर फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एजुकेशन इन लैंग्वेजेस एन सी आर टी डेली वेरी वॉम वेलकम मैम थैंक यू गुड आफ्टरनून टू आर व्यूअर्स एंड नमस्कार And As, um, before we begin this session, yeah. let me give some uh, important information to all our viewers and learners. In the in case they want to ask something, and especially if they want to feel your experience, if you want to share your experience with us, feel free to connect to us through our various medium. You can call us on our telephone number that is double eight double zero double four zero double five nine. Either you can drop a mail at our email address that is tth dot class seven at the rate cit dot nic dot rn. And in case you have joined us through our live streaming, that means you are on our NCERT official YouTube channel. Dear learners and viewers, you have to go to the live chat section and you have to drop your comment out there. Our expert will be happy to answer all your queries and doubts if you have any. So, ma'am, let's begin this session. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Renu. As Renu has already mentioned that today we are going to take up a poem titled "Meadow Surprises," and it is from Class Seven English Textbook Honeycomb. So, before we begin with the poem, let us discuss a few questions, and these questions are on your screen. Hmm. Renu, can I request you to read these questions, and then we have an interaction sure, with you. and also with the students yes hmm. and our first question is dear learners and viewers what do you notice when you walk around a park a green field under a clump of trees okay so can i answer on the behalf of them of course you can tell me what how do you feel i i will also tell you how do i feel <laughs> and then we are going to expect a few responses from the students as well yes okay Ma'am, I just love greenery, mm -hmm. and whenever I go to a park or a green field or I uh, roam around a tree, I notice their leaves, ma'am. Specifically, okay. yeah, the greenery of the park, uh, of the green field. I love trees. I love to touch them, actually. Okay. Okay. So I look uh, for tree. Uh, I look for uh, sparrows as well, huh? birds. if they have any nest uh, mm. in the tree yeah. and a lot of things around like a sitting chair as well sometimes okay benches yeah <laughs> beautiful benches mm. so you see when we walk around in a park we notice a lot of things mm. but sometimes we ignore them also mm. we don't make a note of it there are lots of sparrows there are lots of birds there are squirrels there are rabbits mm. okay as you have said that you know trees hmm. flowers of course we should not touch or pluck flowers hmm. but we can always touch the trees hmm. we can we feel can, it ma'am we can appreciate their beauty their beauty hmm. so i mean there are lot of things that we should learn to appreciate hmm. right we should have a keen uh, eye hmm. and an eager way yeah. of listening okay and what's the next question yes. let's read it Yes can we have the yes huh. our next question is do you notice many wonderful things so dear learners and viewers please share your experience what are those wonderful things ma'am i guess nature is uh, itself is a wonderful thing ma'am yeah true yes. absolutely true so i think the second question is related to the first one so yes. the things that you know we have been discussing they are all wonderful things they are all around us but we have to learn to appreciate so now students can you write your views in the chat box even if you write two points that's going to be great your responses are valuable to us okay and next question is what are some of the surprises a meadow has for someone with a keen eye and a sharp ear hmm so if you have a keen eye Hmm. Keen eye means observation. Right. You observe things minutely. Hmm. Even if you are walking around, you can see an ant. Hmm. You observe right. how 
they go in a line. Hmm. You know, the students also have to go to the assembly or to the playground in a line. Hmm. I think we are learning a lot from the ants. Yes, ma'am. Hmm. A lot of things. A lot of things. So they go in a line. Nobody tells them. There is no PT teacher over there to tell them, go in a line. But they do it on their own. So we learn a lot. Hmm. So a keen eye, hmm. observation. Hmm. We minutely shark. observe things around us. Hmm. We observe birds, different hmm. colors. Right. There are so many birds, hmm. you know, and they have beautiful colors. Hmm. And then a sharp ear. Hmm. You know, even sound if, of nature. Yeah, sound hmm. of nature. Hmm. As you had said in the beginning, rustling of the leaves. Hmm. Okay. And when the wind passes through them, it makes sound. It's, to some people, it's it may sound musical. Yes. So that's the beauty of nature. Uh, meadow surprises. And also chirping of the birds. Hmm. Hmm? Hmm. Right. Anything else would you like to add over here? Ma'am, I would like to say uh, the sound of squirrels. Hmm. I mean, they are, these are very fascinating things that we watch around a park, ma'am. Yeah, yes. Okay. So there are so many things. Hmm. Now, if you have not written anything in the chat box, you can write it. Uh, I mean, keep these three questions in your mind, write them and you can share it uh, with us via email also. Now I go to the next slide. This is a poem. I'm going to read the poem to you. And let me share it with you students. That you know, uh, poems are meant to be read aloud. Hmm. We should read them aloud with proper stress, intonation and appropriate pauses. For example, there is a full stop. That means the pause should be a bit longer. If there is a comma, pause should be for a very short, short period. period. Semicolon, something in between. So these are some of the things we have to keep in mind while reading a poem. poem. Hmm. So let me read it for you. Meadows have surprises. Yes, they do have surprises. We have discussed this now, just yeah, now. Just now. You can find them if you look. Walk softly through the velvet grass and listen to the brook. Now, children, if you don't understand a particular word, please underline it. I will come back to the poem and I will explain it to you. I am moving on to the next stanza. You may see a butterfly rest upon a buttercup and unfold its drinking straws to sip the nectar up. Third stanza. You may scare a rabbit who is sitting very still though at first you may not see him when he hops, you will. A dandelion whose fuzzy head was golden days ago has turned to airy parachutes that flutter when you blow. Explore the meadow houses, the burrows in the ground, a nest beneath all grasses, the ants amazing, mound. Oh, meadows have surprises and many things to tell. You may discover these yourself if you look and listen well. well. I think this is the end of the poem. I would like to go back to the first stanza of the poem. Hmm. Can I? Sure, ma'am. Yeah, yes. So this is the first stanza. So, anything that you feel is difficult to understand, maybe brook. Yes. Brook is a small river. Okay. A, a rivulet. Water body. That's hmm. a brook. Right? Right. And meadows have surprises. We all know they have lots and lots of things to share with us. Hmm. They, they are surprises for us. We don't see them around very often. And we will find them only if we have a... Keen eye. Keen eye. Keen eye means minute observation. We observe things minutely. 
walk softly through the velvet grass the grass in the meadows what is a meadow meadow is a pasture it's a grazing land actually where you will find that you know uh, cows and goat and sheep are grazing hmm. it's a, it's an open land full of grass right. there are trees there are flowers and these flowers are also not manicured they grow hmm. on their own they are wild flowers in a way hmm. and the grass is soft like velvet and listen by the brook hmm. and the sound of that brook little uh, small river is so pleasant to hear it's like music to the ears yeah. and of course you have seen butterflies the second hmm. stanza is about the butterfly hmm. so ma'am what it, exactly buttercup is the name of a flower flower okay yes it's a name of a flower and you have you must not only uh, hmm. butterflies even bees hmm. they take nectar from the flowers, flowers. they sit on the flowers hmm. it says that they take out their straws hmm. <laughs> yeah the poet is using you know hmm. whatever they take it out from uh, like their body hmm. uh, the poet is comparing it with straws and they drink the nectar of the flowers flowers and then of course uh, butterfly enjoys it the bees take it to the beehive hmm. and make honey for us the third stanza you may scare a rabbit you see in meadows you will find many animals also these are wild animals but hmm. you know small ones right. i am not talking about those big wild animals like leopards, leopards right. etc right. these are small animals but you know you will not see them because rabbits generally hide themselves hmm. okay and you will see them when you when you reach near hmm. to them they will hop and they will run away okay. because they are so scared of hmm. human beings and of course a dandelion whose fuzzy head dandelion is also a kind of a wild flower which is yellow in color hmm. and when it dries up it becomes fuzzy hmm. i mean it's something like that you can see in the picture over here when it is dry hmm. and when the wind blows these you know seeds these dry things get separated yeah and they fly in the air yeah. and it looks as if so many parachutes are coming <laughs> down how beautifully the poet has compared hmm. these you know these fuzzy heads with parachutes lovely comparisons are there okay and then next explore the meadow houses now which houses are these bungalows no mm -hmm. these houses are houses of the animals the birds who live there hmm. maybe you will come across uh, come come across a burrow where the rabbits uh, lives hmm. and beneath the tall grass there is a nest a bird has made a right. nest or ants amazing mound or probably there is a mound which is the house of uh, ants okay oh meadows you have so many surprises children if you go to a park near your house there also you will find so many surprises one doesn't have to go you know uh, outside the city to to a meadow if you can go nothing like it but even in in our parks you will find such surprises and many things to tell share with your parents teachers uh, friends you may discover these yourself if you look and uh, listen listen well well so that means observation and listening these two skills have to be developed and listening in any case hmm. you have to develop you know this skill is becoming in a way extinct we don't have the patience to listen to others ma'am even i was about to ask you hmm. if these are two very main skills how hmm. we uh, or our learners and viewers inculcate them ma'am yes so like this you read the poem listen to hmm. the poem on video listen to short stories listen to radio listen to tv listen to your friend keenly hmm. listen to your teacher to your parents develop that skill once you develop that skill you will come across new words hmm. vocabulary right. and new structures that will help you develop your language right hmm so what are the surprises hmm. now renu would you like to read these surprises yes ma'am sure hmm. 
Meadows are full of freshness, yeah. richness of beauty, mm. a variety of flora and fauna, yeah. offers several surprises and eager eyes and listen carefully. Okay. So I think in these four or five lines, mm. the entire poem is now compressed. Right. That meadows are full of surprises for us. Mm. And they are beautiful surprises. Mm. We must learn to appreciate. We must observe and appreciate and listen to these beautiful sounds which are musical and they have variety of flora and fauna mm. animals plants mm. the poet has talked about dandelion earlier it was yellow now that it has dried up it's so fuzzy it's white in color and it's flying in the air like parachutes richness of beauty mm. i mean it's so beautiful we must learn to appreciate beauty in each and everything right i think that is the skill we need to develop mm. You know, once we develop such things, uh, uh, these skills, uh, you know, we become a positive person. Hmm. You see, the, our personality changes because we are looking for beautiful things. We are looking for positive things that give us happiness. So I hope the poem is clear to you. If you have any question, you may ask us. Right. Dear learners and viewers, we are receiving your comments. We appreciate your efforts, but we would love to have the comments. If you have any query, you want to share your experience, please feel free to connect to us. Uh, you can drop your comments on our YouTube channel, that is NCRT official YouTube channel. Go to the live chat box and drop your comment out there. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So now we have come to working with the poem. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, there are a few phrases. Would you like to read, Renu? Yes, ma'am. Let's. Huh. So, uh, there are a few phrases like velvet grass, hmm. drinking straws, hmm. meadow houses, amazing mound and fuzzy head. Now students, this task is for you. Hmm. You have to go back to the stanza and find out in which stanza these phrases have come. Hmm. Are you doing it? I guess they are. Ah, <laughs> must be. So, let's see velvet grass. Hmm. Velvet grass comes in the first stanza, that means it's soft grass, hmm? right? which is very soft. Therefore, hmm. the word velvet has been used. Grass is not velvet, it is soft like velvet. Hmm. So, it's, it's a beautiful there is a comparison, right? Uh, metaphor, huh, comparison. Metaphor. Huh. It's a metaphor that the poet has used. Now, drinking straws, it comes in the second stanza. Now, where are these straws? Are these made of plastic or paper? <laughs> these are, uh, you can say, uh, the, bee. The, the bee and the butterfly, butterfly. they use those, uh, you, you can say, their body parts, hmm. they drink uh, the nectar, hmm. okay. Then meadow houses, now hmm. these houses are unlike our houses, hmm. these and this meadow houses, this particular, um, uh, this thing is uh, in stanza 5 it's in stanza 5 meadow houses now meadow houses are ants house birds house hmm. rabbits house nest burrows mounds hmm? so, so these are the houses hmm. next is amazing mound who makes this amazing mound ant is so small hmm. and have you ever seen the mound which they make it's hmm. so big it's so big right it's big so that means they are so industrious they are so hard working that they continue, you know, working on that and they make mm. their house under it. The next is fuzzy head. Who has the fuzzy head? It is in the fourth stanza. Dandelion. Dandelion. Mm. Yes, dandelion flower, which, which is uh, generally yellow in color. But after it dries up, it's, it looks white and uh, pale, okay. pale color. So these are some of the these are some of the metaphors that the poet has used. Now use these in sentences of your own. Can you use it? You can make your own sentences. Now children, have you observed one thing that the questions which we discussed before we began the poem, you could write anything. So we don't have to rote memorize anything. Hmm. We just have to share our ex experiences our context, right? So that is real learning. Hmm? Hmm. And here also when you use these phrases in sentences of your own, 
that that means you are developing or creating these sentences on your own you don't have to mug up any sentence so thereby it will help you become independent learners that's what the whole idea of learning is and all and all huh. those phrases will make their writing more beautiful and creative right yes absolutely <laughs> so uh, it will help you yes. as she has rightly said that you know their writing will become beautiful and you you will become creative writers in a way hmm. because you you are using your own expression that is what is needed now there are a few more questions hmm. over here uh you can should i yeah yeah ab- absolutely absolutely so, dear learners and viewers which line in the poem suggests that you need a keen eye and a sharp ear to enjoy a meadow hmm hmm so which line ma'am i guess it's in uh, is the, the last last one, one or second last one no, right no it's the last stanza okay. if you look and listen well hmm So this is the line and that is the crux of the poem let it be anything the poet is talking about meadows over here hmm. maybe you have gone to a mall you there you observe people hmm. you observe how they are behaving hmm. the kind of language they are using hmm. are they standing in the queue or not hmm. are they breaking the line hmm. so that's also something to be observed right right hmm. you go to a market place hmm. you observe things over there hmm. you go to some exhibition a fair hmm. so lot of things so observation plays an important role in our lives and also listening carefully when we observe and we listen carefully and after that when we jot down those points or write a paragraph it's a creative piece of writing hmm because you have written it on your own without anybody's help right right so that you are moving away from rote, rote learning hmm. so keen observation and listening carefully these are the two things they play an important role in our learning process right ha huh. and also sure. of course huh. reading hmm. i mean you must read the poem on your own once this session is over children you must read the poem on your own read it aloud as i told you in the beginning read it with proper stress hmm. intonation and pauses hmm. that's what will create the meaning out of the so poem. they have to follow the punctuation part uh, yeah very punctuation easy. is very important hmm. very very important not only for poems hmm. but also for any text okay why do we punctuate punctuation hmm. has meaning hmm you know when we are speaking to each other uh, we pause hmm we uh, you know uh, stop for a while hmm hmm that means we are pausing hmm. we are using comma full stop hmm all these things are happening hmm but when we are reading how does the writer hmm. convey these things to the reader Hmm. that here you have to pause hmm. so punctuation marks help us understand the pauses hmm. hmm right for example sign of exclamation right exactly surprise hmm if if there is surprise if there is sadness hmm. if there is thankfulness hmm sign of exclamation is used right so what we do with hands and gestures and facial expression is conveyed through Alrighty. punctuation right marks. right so they play an important role in our understanding of the text now the next question find pictures of the kinds of birds insects and scenes mentioned in the poem now can you do that this is a kind of a small little project hmm now these days it has become very easy hmm. because all of us are using internet right they are available on the internet you have smartphones with you you can find on them but you know when you are looking for pictures read about that hmm. so that reading will help you develop better comprehension you will be able to write better when right. you read you write better right because you are developing new vocabulary you are developing uh, a new s- expressions now in this poem we have learned so many phrases hmm. now children you have to use these phrases because otherwise there is no point in reading them right right, right. okay ma'am here let me tell you that we have only 4 more minutes left for the session ma'am okay we are also coming close to the end of end. the session okay 
Ha, now I come to the writing part. Now this writing part you have to do very carefully. Now watch. The first step is watch. Watch a tree or a plant. Walk across a field or a park at the same time every day for a week. Maybe after the school hour in the evening. And keep a diary of what you see and hear. Keep a diary. That means you are making notes now. Maybe things are the same or maybe things are changing. First day, there was a flower in bloom. But after a week, now that flower has withered away. Hmm. So you have to, you have to, I mean, observe very keenly, minutely hmm. and write. Now write, at the end of the week, write a short paragraph or a poem about your experiences. So this is contextual learning. This is experiential learning. You are writing your experiences of what you have observed, what you have seen, what you have heard and put your writing up on the class bulletin board. So when 40 students will put it up, there is going to be a lot of variety in the mm. classroom and children will read each other's poems or paragraphs. They will learn from each other. This is peer learning. We learn not only from the teacher, self-learning, peer learning plays an important role. And if we stay, I mean, start reading or learning on our own, I think that is the best way. Now towards the end, I am going to read a small poem for you. And then I will tell you how you can further, you know, continue writing something in this poem. You can add a few lines in the poem. Bees are buzzing. Frogs are hopping. Simple, no? The poet is simply writing bees are buzzing. Frogs are hopping. Moles are digging. There is no stopping. Because bees, they make sound, buzz continuously. Frogs also hop continuously. Moles keep digging. Wines from climbing. Wines, like you have uh, those, uh, those plants which cannot stand on their own. They, you know, grow around other trees. Wines from climbing. Grass from growing. Birds from singing. Winds from blowing. Buds from blooming. Bees are humming. Sunbeams are dancing. Rain drops drumming, all the world is whirling, dizzy, summer time is very busy. Now can you add a few lines to this poem? Birds are chirping, hmm? Hmm. squirrels are running, hmm. huh? you can keep adding, ducks are quacking, hmm? huh? wind hmm. is blowing, continue adding. Right. And then? You will, you will have a beautiful poem or you can start a new poem by yourself. You can add more uh, sentences, you can write a poem on your own. See the world around you, what's happening, children are running, birds are chirping. So what activity they are doing, you just have to put it in the form of a poem. poem. So it, it is based in, on your observation. Right. So with this, I have come to the and end of my... Uh, poem hmm. session if there are any any questions i would love to discuss them ma'am you explained us so very well we don't have any questions but okay. if you like to add something in brief you can ma'am hmm? would you like to add something to all our viewers you want to say something ma'am i only want to say that you know don't hesitate uh, you know to read hmm. even if you come across a new poem try to read it on your own any new text, try to read it on your own. Now, there are a lot of things that you can read based on this poem. You can read about bees, you, bees are buzzing. You read about bees, a paragraph, you will learn. I go back to this particular poem. Hmm. You read about frogs, you read about wines, different kind of wines are there, grass. You read about any topic which is given over here. Hmm. That will really enhance your knowledge. Right. And new words will come. 
exactly so you can learn a lot from uh, them and uh, here i i'm saying that it's we are in very short of time so ma'am we have to wind up this session here only but thank you so very much ma'am for thank being you. with us and My pleasure. for your very informative and beautiful poem that is meadow shell surprises and dear learners and viewers time for me to wrap up this session but you stay tuned to avidya channels and ncrt official youtube channel for more informative program our next session is on social science seven standard student and the topic uh, would be delhi ke sultan part 1 so being with be with us and it's time for me to say goodbye to you all namaskar <laughs>